Who doesn't love a good underdog story? No, not that kind of underdog. This kind. Rat is a 1986 action drama from director Hal Needham. The movie opens with a killer montage of BMX bike tricks. Our hero, Crew Jones, and his friends are off to deliver newspapers, something that probably won't exist for too much longer. Why is the sky red like that? Is this Damnation Alley? These kids are awful paper boys. They drive through yards, crash into cars, and generally seem to annoy people. Whoa, where am I? Why exactly is he delivering a newspaper to 7-Eleven? Crew sees a sign for something called Hell Track, a huge BMX track that's being built in his hometown of Cochrane. The track is being built for a race with the biggest names in BMX. If this was now, it would be Heck Track, sponsored by 7-Eleven, Doritos, Snickers, and about 50 other things. Crew gets to the last stop on his delivery, and he missed his record by five minutes. Oh, I wonder if he'll ever break that record in a montage somewhere towards the end of the movie. In a town meeting, the mayor is introducing the president of the Mongoose Bike Company, Duke Best. Mayor Jenkins is a creep. I'm sure in reality he's a very nice guy, but if somebody told me they found a dozen dead hookers buried in his backyard, I would not be surprised. Anyway, Duke Best is talking about the upcoming Hell Track race. Local businessman Mr. Timmer was one of the people that helped to make this track a reality. The winner of the race gets $100,000 in a Corvette. Because what kind of vehicle do you give to BMX riders? How about a car that you can actually fit your bike in? Excuse me. Not to put a damper on the spirit of things. But to put a damper on the spirit of things. I wonder how our kids are going to feel when hundreds of outside youngsters take over their town and they're not allowed to race in their own backyard. To appease the crowd, Duke says that any local youth that qualifies for the race will receive $10,000 and a place on Hell Track. Over in the Honeycomb hideout, I mean the Kicks hideout, Crew and his friends are talking about Bart Taylor. Sergeant Pringle's guy wants to race the kids through this local lumber yard. Another montage. This movie's about 80% montage. I think the only other movie that has more montages in it is Cool as Ice, and we all know about that movie. It's awesome! Good to know crime is so non-existent in Cochrane that the one cop in town can do this sort of thing on duty. Crew meets up with the others. Hey dude, we're going ass slide. You wanna come? They wanna do what? Hey dude, we're going ass slide. You wanna come? No. Ass sliding with you guys? I'm gonna wait for my ass sliding with somebody special. You know, your first ass sliding should be with someone special. Crew's little sister Wes almost gets into a fight with a young Napoleon Dynamite. Crew takes Wes home. Okay, either I'm having a flashback or there's a pink elephant with a cowboy hat watering this guy's lawn. After putting his sister in a garbage can, Crew tells his mother that he wants to try and qualify for Hell Track. Of course, that's also the same day he's supposed to take his SATs. Crew's trying to master a move, but keeps messing up. Yeah, good to know his friends are so supportive. You guys go ahead. I'm gonna stay in practice. <laughs> You're hopeless, man. Yeah, he's hopeless. Nobody ever got better by practicing. The town has a parade to herald the arrival of the professional bikers. Boy, this is some parade, Burton, some parade. Duke seems to be awfully excited about three cars and some clowns. The major professionals are Bart Taylor and the twins, Rex and Rod Reynolds. Bart stops the whole parade to try and hit on Christian. Crew then also stops the parade to let a woman through and sees Christian for the first time. Katie, check this out. Look at me, look at me, look what I can do. At the high school dance, Bart and the twins are dancing, I think? The hell is this? I think the twins are wearing the uniforms from V. While Bart's inside dancing horribly, Crew is outside doing some tricks to impress Christian and the locals. Christian interrupts Bart. She gets Crew to follow her, and what happens next has to be a cinematic first. Crew and Christian have this sort of slow-motion bike dance that runs for the entire duration of Send Me an Angel by Real Life. Send me Words cannot fully describe just how ridiculously awesome this is. Well, now we know what Lori Loughlin's O face looks like. After the song, they're surrounded by fans and Cruz speeds off for some reason. At the local pizza shop, Bart's trying to get a table for him and his hussies. So the mayor works at the pizza place? Hey, what's this? New rules. Hey, it's bogus. It's still the rules. <laughs> get out of here. 
here. Between the four of them, they couldn't afford five bucks? Crew's talking to Christian. You know, this really is beautiful. Yeah. Bet you have a lot of fun around here. Oh yeah, it's just a hotbed of activity with the pizza joint and the lumber yard. Crew finally found that special girl he wants to go ass sliding with. And it's probably crazy, but crazy is nothing new. I heard it hurts the first couple of times, but eventually you get used to it. Crew is a job at the local bakery or deli? Why, it's both! It's a bakery deli! Late again, crew? Oh, well, excuse me, 1986 Seth Rogen. The bikers are lining up for the Helltrack qualifying races. Bart's girlfriends look like they lost a fight with a paper shredder. Duke introduces Bart, but he kind of loses steam at the end. Right there! Right there, the most proud of one of all is right there, the number one rider, the ace BMXer of all time, my man! Bart Taylor. Oh my god, he's the greatest rider of all time, my man! Bart Taylor. The first group of bikers starts the qualifier montage. This song kicks ass. Crew's turn for the qualifier. His mother sees him on TV and she's pissed he isn't at the SATs. Crew makes it past the first and second qualifiers, although I'm not sure how I feel about this. Yes, he is the hero, and he's the guy I want to win, but he's kind of cheating. The bad guys are knocking bikers over, but Crew is clearly taking shortcuts. Oh, whatever. There's thunder in your heart! Crew places in the third race, so he wins $10,000 in a spot in the Hell Track race. Things are going great until old Scowly Puss shows up. Crew's mom is not too happy with him, despite the fact that he just won $10,000. He makes a deal with her that'll take his SATs in six months. Crew's now a local hero for getting into Hell Track. The double mint whores try to distract Crew. He's totally looking at their boobs. Crew then meets up with Duke, who offers him a deal. How would you like to be the man responsible for bringing BMX to all the small towns in the USA? Jesus, this is a nice limo. Yes, it is. Now suck my cock. Duke offers to sponsor him under the Mongoose bike label if he drops out of the Hell Track race. Duke's not very good at this. Well, that's impossible. I was told that you had to have a sponsor to race. No sponsor, no racy. Timmer overhears this and... No, sir, I don't like it. Hi, Jer. He obviously races for Coke. No, not the soda. He spends all his money on blow. Crew then uses the ten grand to sponsor himself as Rad Racing. He hires a bunch of students to help make t-shirts. Well, what are you doing? Never saw a guy so upset before about a woman touching his penis. Crew and Christian then ride off into yet another montage. After jumping into the lake, they go back to a cabin to dry off. I've listened to this five times, and I still have no idea what she's talking about. You waste two cans of beans to make hot chocolate in river water. And the worst part is, we don't even have any milk. I gotta say, I like Lori Lachlan with her hair a little mussed up. Oh, Uncle Jesse isn't gonna like this. Duke changes the rules yet again to screw over Crew. Timmer overhears this and is disgusted with Duke. Crew snaps at Christian about losing his spot in the race. After getting a lecture from Christian, Crew decides to step up and deliver his newspapers the right way. The locals call a town meeting to try and figure out how to support Crew. Crew apologizes to Christian. Would you like to be my friend? Aw, thanks, conveniently placed panda poster. A local girl comes in to tell Crew to go to the town hall. I remember when drugstores used to have awesome comic racks like this. Avengers Annual 14, ROM number 72, G.I. Joe number 41, Uncanny X-Men number 199? Ah, <sighs> those were good days. Everyone in town is coming together to donate money to Crew so he can race. They're about 27 grand short, so Timmer steps up and puts in the rest. Duke flips out when he finds out about Crew, so he tells the twins to take him out during the race. Christian comes to support Crew, and he says one of the most romantic things I've ever heard. God, what I wouldn't give to go out sliding with you right now. Helltrack's supposed to have 20 riders, but it only has 19 and a camera guy. The Helltrack race begins. Crew's out in front for most of the race until he gets knocked off the track. Crew does a backflip and is now right behind Team Mongoose. Oh my heart, a backflip! Hulk Hogan, eat 
get your heart out. What does Hulk Hogan have to do with this? Bart knocks the twins out so he and Crew can have a fair race. Even though Crew wins the race, his mother is still annoyed. Duke fires Bart and he joins up with Team Red. Now that we're official, think we got room on the Rad team? Good idea. Why not? All right. Yeah. What a team. Only one thing left to do, and that's outro bike montage. The movie was filmed in Calgary and Cochrane, Alberta, Canada. Stuntman director Hal Needham was once the highest paid stuntman in the world. He directed Smokey and the Bandit, Hooper, and The Cannonball Run, each of which is considered to be some of the best action comedies of all time. He also directed the over-the-top pile of awesome that is Megaforce. There were many pro BMX riders in the film, but the big get was Olympic gold medalist Bart Connor. If the movie had been a hit, this would have launched his acting career. Christian was played by Lori Loughlin. Two years after Rad, her career took off when she joined the cast of the hugely popular Full House. Talia Shire played Crew's mom. She spent most of the movie looking down her nose at Crew and generally being disproving of him riding a bike instead of working a desk job. Bill Allen was great as Crew. His acting career never really took off, although recently he has been popping back up. He had a small part in Breaking Bad and he had a very funny bit on Tosh.0. He's currently in the upcoming BMX movie, Accelerate. Haltrack was built specifically for the film. The start of the race was a massive 25-foot drop on a 72-degree angle. It was so steep it freaked out even the professionals. Last year was the 25th anniversary of Rad, and there was a huge three-day event to celebrate. Over 2,000 people showed up for the event in Calgary and Cochrane, Canada. There's even a documentary about the film currently in post-production. Vans even put out 25th anniversary Rad sneakers. Pretty impressive for a film that still isn't on DVD in the U.S. During the 25th anniversary event, many of the cast and crew showed up. After they showed the film, they had multiple Q&A sessions. There was also a BMX event in the skate park, and a bike tour of the filming locations in both Cochrane and Calgary. Most of the exteriors were shot in Bonus, Calgary. Bonus High School was the school where crew was trying to impress Katie. The scene with the amazing slow-mo bike dance was filmed in Cochrane High School. The sawmill was the Spray Lake Sawmill in Cochrane. One thing that I thought was odd was Duke represented Mongoose, which was a real bike company. It was weird because he was the big corporate villain, and Mongoose was one of the sponsors of the film. It just seemed unusual that they would allow themselves to be presented as evil. This movie kicks ass. It's a perfect time capsule of the 80s, and one of the best examples of an underdog movie. The cast was likable, the bike tricks were amazing, and the soundtrack is legendary, especially the three tracks from John Farnham. How can you listen to a song like Break the Ice or Thunder in Your Heart and not get totally pumped up? You're in a lumberyard. Go balls out.